Yes, folks, so we're back. Um, for those of you all who are now joining us, here we like with Mr. Joseph Valley, the author, product, uh, producer, right. director of the documentary 1970 Black Power Revolution, The Truth. Let the truth be told. Let the truth be told. Yeah. Right? So, before we took the break, uh, Maurice Alashi was asking. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask, in your compiling of information for the documentary, mm -hmm. uh, did you come across people uh, who were against the, the information? Not just the information, but the action be taken at the time. Did you come across people who was against it and thinking that you know they had a, a better way or another way to do what they did? Yeah, the, the, well, I try to be objective in the documentary mm -hmm. and. Well, one of the person I interviewed was um, um, deceased now, Morgan Job. Right. Right, Dr. 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 Morgan. Yeah, Dr. Morgan Job. Dr. Yeah, Morgan give him a title, mm -hmm. Dr. Morgan Job. And he brought a different perspective to, you know, what um, Brother Camborn and Brother Dagger and they were bringing mm -hmm. towards the 1970. Right. And when you look at the documentary, um, even in the, in the trailer, he would say, um, I wasn't going to let the, um, Daga and Cambon and them be in my ministers and so on and so on because so and so, mm -hmm. right? And he he gave that 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 perspective. Right. So in the documentary, he spoke about that in the documentary. In the documentary, you right? Want to, you want he, to, um, and he mentioned elaborate just a little bit on something that he said along that line for the people who will see it yet. Yeah. Or you know. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that he a point he brought up uh, brought across. He was saying that, you know, okay, let's look at colonialism. Mm -hmm. He was saying that, yes, it had some things bad about it. He said, but we inherited a police system. We mm -hmm. inherited a legal system. We inherited an education system. Right. <laughs> and he was saying that, you know, um, it wasn't all bad. Okay. Because we still got a... Uh, System, a system right. to work with, yeah. right? So, and that was his. Well, then that, I don't agree with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. and that was, and that was, and again, that was his perspective. Correct. And that was his opinion. opinion yeah. And 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 that is one of the things in the documentary. You bring both sides of the a balance. Yeah, yeah, you must yeah, bring yeah, a balance. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. in the interviews, you know, yes, I had Brother Cambon, I had Doctor Morgan Job, we had. Um, had a drummer, a gentleman who used to be in the streets marching, mm -hmm. right? Um, had police officers. Okay. Yeah, had two, two police officers. One of the police officers, he was one of them who transported prisoners to... During the time? Yeah, during that time. Okay. Right, so... You weren't able to meet um, Mr. Shah, Rafik? Yeah, I you interviewed, did? yeah, I interviewed right, good. Um, good. Um, Rafik Shah. Mm -hmm. I did, I interviewed Rafik Shah. So, it, so the documentary tend to bring a, a balance. And yeah. There was a balance in the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't go for your feelings or your yeah, yeah. So people. It, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's not yeah. about me. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, the documentary come like I'm, I'm a reporter yeah. and I'm reporting the facts. Right. Right. So whether or not I agree or disagree as the case may be, I have nothing There's to no do with it. Yeah. yeah, I am reporting the facts. Right. right. What are the facts? Let the truth be told. What happened? Right. This is how it happened. Okay, that is what we're going to document. Right. That is how we're going to state it. We're going to bring both sides of the story. Right. Let the people decide. Right. You look at the documentary and you decide that, okay, um, this is what happened. Was it good? Was it bad? You Take decide. Take some as you please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You didn't meet and leave the bone, as the people <laughs> say. All right. So much. I mean, what I do with 1970 is I try to speak with people who was actually there on the ground. Right. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate uh, to meet a few people Great. over the years. And that's what kind of inspired the, this line, the 1970, never forget. Mm -hmm. Because we all, the three of us sitting down here know is a very important part of Trinidad and Tobago's history mm -hmm. um, that is in, embedded in our culture now, but it is not widely known about. Right. And when we listen to some of the people who were influenced by it. I mean, Brother Assistance just transitioned. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate to hear this man talk about some of the things that they, they were doing in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Some of the good things that they were doing for the community mm -hmm. and was being fight by the government. Hmm. Of the day. Of the day, mm -hmm. you know. 
uh, it, and again, so it brings me back to the um, if if we were for the betterment of people, mm -hmm. why would you be fighting against against this year? So all right, we start off. We loud and rowdy. We want this. We want that. Mr. Valley come let us meet us. I, 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 I said, Dong, mm -hmm. why wasn't that the approach? The approach yeah. mm -hmm. It was always from all reportings, and of course, you'd be able to say a little better because you went and do more research, but it was always a high handed, mm -hmm. come at your direct approach. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why um, groups like North were born, mm -hmm. the National Union of Freedom Fighters, mm -hmm. right? Uh, did you come across any reading or research? Or did you? Uh, yeah, they involved? I'm, yeah, I met, I'm um, trying to remember the gentleman's name now. Um, I've seen his face and I can't remember his name. But um, I interviewed him. He was a, he was a part of NAF at that, at that point in time. Hmm. And he, he shed some, a lot of light. Right. right. Yeah, on what, on what happened, how it happened. And he say, <laughs> he, he say, um, he gave me the story when he jumped through the window and borrows and them were coming for him. Mm -hmm. And thing, and they asked him, Clem Haynes, that is his name. Right. Say when he reached any station, they say, You still alive, boy? <laughs> you know, that was and that's the story he was he was he was given to me. Mm. You know? Right. And you know, because they hold him and yeah. they brought him there and bringing him <laughs> to the station because they were they was looking for him. Yeah, so that was a that that was a different time. Right. You know, and and documenting the the history and and speaking to these gentlemen and ladies, um, 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 Dr. Jennifer Jones Cunahan, mm -hmm. right, you get, a, you get a, a different perspective on what took place at, you know, at that point in time. Right. right you really get so let me ask you a question, um, Joseph, um, because I know how I operate, right? Right. And the more information I get, mm -hmm. my personality does adjust, right, right to suit it. Mm -hmm. So somebody in your position because you seem like a very calm person you know <laughs> yeah. but in doing that research and going from person to person and getting the different mm -hmm. perspectives mm -hmm. on what took place in 1970 how did that affect your trajectory as a person going mm -hmm. forward because for me mm -hmm. i know i watch a documentary yet okay. for, for specific reasons right, right? i say let me come here Talk to you today, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to man watch it. Right. Right. And <laughs> right. I'm going to man watch it with my family because I want my wife to see my children, to see yeah. everybody, to right. experience mm -hmm. this. Because I find a lot of the things that we, we don't talk about are crown jewels. I like to call them crown jewels, right? right? And something as important as that mm -hmm. is a big deal for me because it is probably the second, Haiti would have been the first. Black, the, 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 the revolution that was the only successful slave revolt in Trinidad. Now, our revolution may not have been as big, and it was not a slave revolution, mm -hmm. but it still was a revolution. And I think it charted the course for not even, not just the people who were involved in it, mm -hmm. but their, ch their children yeah. and the people came come, coming Coming from them. them. Yeah. You know, so tell, tell us a little bit about how that, um, how that affected you. Positively, mm -hmm. negatively, negatively. Yeah, could be yeah, honest. Yeah. Um, well, working on it, working on it, um, I got a chance to interview my father and my mm -hmm. uncle. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, my father is Dr. Joseph Valley Senior, mm -hmm. and my uncle is um, Kenneth Valley. Ah, okay. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Former minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people national movement, and mm -hmm. um, you know the. Surprisingly, they never spoke about 1970 before. And only when I interviewed them, then Uncle Kenneth was saying that while he was going to the University of the West Indies, mm -hmm. um, he was in the auditorium when um, Makanda Daga, Brother Daga, was speaking. Mm -hmm. And how we was trying to you know, get them to go and block the gate when the Canadian governor was coming. And he, mm -hmm. was, he, he was saying he was part of that. Okay. So, I never knew that. <laughs> okay. I, I never knew my father. He told my father if he don't cut his cut his hair, mm -hmm. he would lose his job. Right? I never knew that they experienced those kind of things because they never spoke about it. Right? They never spoke about it. So I, I got a. It was a, a different perspective, a different experience. Right. Right. Then understanding 
that they were the country club and some of these other club and even if, even if you had position in society, so-called position as a, mm -hmm. and you go there um, <laughs> and you're in the water, they would, they would say they're not coming in the water once you are there, whether you are African or East Indian or Indian, as mm -hmm. you would say, mm -hmm. right? Um, so coming across all those things, it was a whole like wow mm -hmm. because right I wasn't brought up, I wasn't brought up like that right <laughs> right I wasn't brought up like that so now we are here in this thing and say but these things took place in Trinidad and, and Tobago mm -hmm. right so it, you get a, a better understanding of what took place how it should how you as an individual should be thinking mm -hmm. because you want to respect other culture you want to respect. Um, respect people, mm -hmm. right? You want to show appreciation and hoping that you get that in return, right? Right? Because um, as an African, I would like somebody's people to respect me mm -hmm. as an African young man mm -hmm. and respect my culture. Correct. And in the same way, I want to respect you as an individual. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what race you are, and I'm going to respect your culture. Right. Right. But again, it must go across the board. The board yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm being disrespected, I learn to stand up for my rights. Right. Because it is important to not to allow people to the push over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not right. Yeah. Because as uh, when I was younger, um, as a teenager, now starting to work, as one gentleman told me, he would say, "Finally, they will come and take twenty-five cents today, and if you say nothing, they will take fifty cents tomorrow." Hmm. And if you say nothing, then they will take a dollar. And you say, Vali, one day you will be going home without your salary. <laughs> you say, so anytime they try to take 25, 20, 25 cents from you, stand up. Stand up. Mm. <laughs> well, as a certain gentleman say, um, they didn't riot. It was a joke. Right? Um, but anyhow, we are going down that road. No, we have to but go down them roads. We have to go down them roads because... The, the gentleman that made that statement is a part of the organization mm -hmm. that was in political power at the time. At that time. Yeah. You know? Correct. Mm. And to make a, that statement, I mean, now we're taking it in a different context. We're taking it here today based on what you just say, which mm. makes so much sense. And you get that information early in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And then you would see, I raised the price on them, they in riot. Mm -hmm. I raise it again, then mm -hmm. I told me I should be so disrespectful. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That statement is, and you also could be possibly inciting violence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the same thing you're talking yeah. about, you could yeah. possibly. Well, I, know, I know the media, the media spoke about that at length when, when, when it the, happened. Yeah, yeah, when certain statements were made. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one well, of the things that we seen, you know, the, the government at that time, and, I, and we, spoke, we were speaking about that, you know. The question was asked, you know, during the 1970s, why it is, you know, the government didn't give, you know, the support to the young people because mm -hmm. they didn't have jobs and so on. And uh, one of the things that came out, out of the documentary, um, Dr. Eric Williams at the time, mm -hmm. I say eight years after independence, right. a prime minister of a country, mm -hmm. then what will happen if you decide that here what just get everybody out to, out to your country all the foreigners mm -hmm. who have all the foreign you know it, it don't business don't work like that right so one point in coming out from the documentary is that what they find is that although dr eric williams was trying mm -hmm. to get to kind of smooth over the colonialism and and get people to get um like we had Tate and I mm -hmm. and you had other uh, Texaco and all the other companies yeah. and they wanted to privatize um not privatize um nationalize, nationalize, nationalize yeah. as, right now that would that would have taken time mm -hmm. but again the people find he was taking too long right because mm -hmm. as a prime minister you can't just come into office and then you say, all right, we're doing this. Yeah, everybody, what will happen to your economy? Right. right? So they would bring in that, that, that perspective, perspective to yeah. it. Right? Um, I don't know if you, know, you would agree or disagree, mm -hmm. but that was a perspective that came out um, from the documentary yeah. at that point in time in yeah. terms of the economy and trying to see how best you could manage the economy and have a smooth transition mm -hmm. so that you know, the people will be able to be 
treated equally, equally yeah. treated with respect, mm -hmm. um, get jobs, and not and had to be marching because which prime minister would want people marching mm. for jobs when you could provide jobs for them? Correct. So I am. Um, I disagree with that. Of course, I'm always open to new information. Yeah, that, 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 that came out from the document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm always yeah. open to being wrong. Mm -hmm. okay. my, my chief, my chief does always say, mm -hmm. um, it is a universal right to be wrong. Yeah, it's <laughs> chief Olaki, I'm a Satunji, right? Um, let me take a break and come back. I'll tell you why I do agree with that. All right, All right. Yeah. so we'll be back.